Hi and welcome to Unit 1 Topic 3, Video 8. And in this video we're going to talk about disproving statements. So it really plays on well with Video 7. It's definitely worth watching Video 7 first. In Video 7 we talked about proving statements that were implied or equivalent to statements. This is going to be a little bit of summary on how we could disprove statements that are made. But there might not be implied or equivalency there. Maybe it'll just be a simple algebraic statement as well. So reminder, um, upside down capital A means for all and the backwards capital E means there exists. To prove a for all statement, we have to mathematically demonstrate that it's true in every case. Or we might disprove it through counterexample. So mathematically demonstrating it's proven, proven true in every case um, is hard. So true is hard, whereas false is easy. You just got to find one counterexample. One case, then the whole, the for all statement collapses. Whereas there exists, true is easy. Just find the one that exists, or there might be 10. You only have to find one of them. Then you've proven that there exists. Whereas false is hard because you have to prove that actually none exist. So this one's a bit harder to do. That's going to be algebraic. So first we've got a disproving for all statements. So remember, that's going to be with counterexample. Example 8. Prove that Pn equals n squared plus n plus 41 produce um, always generates a prime. I don't know whether that should be there. Always generates a prime uh, for all n existing in the natural numbers. So the key here is recognizing that this is a for all statement. And therefore the counter statement is there exists a natural number such that this is not a prime. And I'm going to look for that. And in fact, it's not that hard to find it with a little bit of logic. But let's start with, you know, the obvious thing to do would be to toy around with it. Just have a play. So P of 1, when we're talking about the natural numbers, was 1 plus 1 plus 41 is 43, which is prime. P of 2 is 4 plus 2 plus 41 is 47. Ditto. P of 3 is 9 plus 3 is 12, 53. Now I know my primes, and that's also prime. P of 4 is 16, plus 4 is 20, plus 41 is 61, also prime. So I can see there's a bit of a problem here. Maybe it's true. How am I going to prove it's true? Well, let's have a closer look at it. What makes this prime? It's prime if it can't be divided by anything. And I can see here that the 41 is really mucking everything up as a prime number. But what about P of 41? Now, I don't know what P of 41 is, but maybe you've got to calculate it, maybe you don't. 41 squared is a bit of a nightmare and I can't be bothered. But what I could do is I could say, well, that's equal to that plus that plus that, which is equal to 41 times 41 plus 1 plus 1, uh, which is equal to 41 times 43. So the 41st iteration of this function, or P of 41, is not a prime. This is not prime, and therefore there does exist primes in this sequence, but it doesn't always generate primes, so the for all statement collapses, and I've disproven example 8. And now we're going to have a look at disproving an um, exist statement, which, as I said, is much harder. So in example 9... Let's say it is thought that there exists an x in the natural numbers such that p of x equals x squared plus 5x minus 14 is prime. Prove that this is not true. Now I'm lucky to have this because otherwise I'm probably going to be looking for a counter example uh, something here because it's an, there exists. So there exists means that if I can find one case, then I've proven it true. But if I can't find one case, then I've got a problem. So again, I might go on that little search again. I don't know where to start, so let's try 1. And 1 gives me 6 minus 14 equals negative 8, which is negative 4 times 2, so that's fine. 2 gives me 4 plus 10 minus 14. Um, yeah, that's a bit of a problem, but um, we're going to assume that. So that's not really prime. Um, so... That's cool, because it's not technically prime. Neither is 1, by the way. Uh, 9 plus 15 is 24, minus 14 is 10. P of 4 
is equal to um, 16 plus 20 is 36 minus 14 is 22. I've got a problem now. And that problem is that these are all turning out to be um, prime. Now, uh, it's not prime. Now, I could go through and prove this by direct proof because I can see here they're also all turning out to be even. And if I play around with this and do a case by case, it actually works. But there is an easier way. And that is to recognize, well, actually, P of X can be factorized as X uh, plus 7 X minus 2. And that expanded gives me x squared plus 5x minus 14. So therefore, it's a it's not a prime. Um, it's a composite number because it's two numbers multiplied together. The only time this could be a prime is if these two numbers are 1 and something else and themselves. So when are they going to be 1? Well, I am dealing with the natural numbers, so I can't have negative 6, and therefore this cannot equal 1. But this could... What if x is equal to 3? So I just need to make sure I'm a little bit careful and I check x equals 3 because this could be a prime if the multiples are uh, one in themselves. But of course, if I put 3 in here, I get 1, but I get 10 here. And 10 is not 3. And it has to be 1 in itself. So a little bit careful there. Maybe it still works, but because I've gone and checked it, 10 is also 5 times 2. And so this is not prime. And therefore, the only case that could be true is false. And so I've shown, just by factorising, that actually P of X can always be written as a composite number. And so therefore, this is not true. P of X is always composite. And therefore, P of X is never prime. So, not true. Okay, so there's um, a couple of examples and some ideas on disproving statements. All the best.